Did you see that post on Reddit? I think it was during this week. Someone created a new way of um, kind of measuring which was the best nation at the Olympics. It wasn't no. just medal count. It wasn't just medals per capita. It was some hybrid between the two and maybe another okay. factor. Okay. Um, but Norway is extremely dominant when it comes to the Winter Olympics. Yeah, I'd imagine so. It's got to be cold there like all year round. Yeah. It's the only thing they do. <laughs> what do they do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what else do you do when it's snowing 360 out of 365 days a year? <laughs> exactly. You got to ski, you got to curl, you know, <laughs> and you got to get your curl on. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it's like shuffleboard for Norwegians. Shuffleboard. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've only ever played that on the iPad, but that's a good sport. <laughs> yeah, man. That's, that's that old people game man they love that i had no idea it was a real sport oh yeah yeah you go to florida man you just like find random shuffleboard like uh paintings on like sidewalks where people just come out of the woodwork to play some shuffleboard awesome yeah. is bowls lawn bowls a thing for old people there as well yeah oh yeah uh okay. what do you even lawn bowls i'm not sure i think there's like an official name for that but i have no idea what it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's lawn bowls for sure <laughs> for sure <laughs> let me look it up yeah. Yeah, Lawn Bowls, Bowls Australia, <laughs> Bowls Premier League. It's definitely called cool, that. There's a Premier Premier League for Lawn Bowls? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you hearing me right? It's um, B-O-W-L-S. Okay, yeah, I know. I'm spelling it B-A-L-L-S. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, no, it's fine. It's hilarious. I wish it was called that. <laughs> yeah, Lawn Bowls sounds awesome. Yeah, man. I think, I think I'm thinking of something else. I know what this is, but uh, what is it, croquet? Oh, that's very English, isn't it? Yeah. You've got yeah. the little, um, I don't know what it is, like a little fork, and you've got the hammer, and you have to tap the ball through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's no, about I all know I know about that. I have no, Yeah, I have no idea how that game actually works, but... No, no. You definitely have to hit the ball through the fork. Yeah. Otherwise, why are they there, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to drink tea and talk about their horses. Yeah. All right, let's just start the show. (laughs) (laughs) So, AirPod batteries. This was a post by Egg Image, um, who says that his AirPod batteries have degraded in half in uh, just a year. So the AirPods came out 13 months ago, um, and he says he only gets 10 minutes of talk time, which is yeah not that good on some airpods now um these things have a really really small battery it's only 30 milliamp hours which is just miniature so it's crazy that they could even get the life um you know that that you experience from new which is i think you get about six hours from the little battery in there which is yeah, yeah amazing um but as i was saying to david before like i haven't even developed a pattern of when i develop my airpods i use them nearly every day maybe for an hour or so which isn't a lot but it's it's not like i think oh i've got to charge in uh, plug in the airpods case at the end of every day i just plug it in randomly and it never seems to run out of power um the actual airpods themselves they they do run out every now and then um but the airpods case just holds them forever um and then when you store it the airpods in the case they charge it of course um, and I haven't noticed any degradation on mine. Um, David, you've had yours 24 hours, so you probably haven't noticed any in yours. Yeah, not even. Um, I think it's been uh, eight hours. That's all I've had. Oh. <laughs> I can definitely say I've noticed a grade in mine. Like the the actual case, maybe a little, but the AirPods definitely, they definitely die a lot faster than when I first got them. How soon are you talking? Like an hour? Or? Um, I mean, I don't obviously tell, but my guess is probably around an hour to two hours just depends on how i'm using them yeah that's pretty bad and i know that if you're using anything that activates the microphone in the airpods say a phone call then that absolutely yeah, that, destroys yeah, the battery that, the microphone does yeah and of course listening level like with the volume of the airpods i normally have mine around 50 percent and still have good life but anything above that that eats into the battery really quickly as well yeah, it makes sense. I, I still can't believe they can even get six hours to begin with on a 30 milliamp. That's nuts. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, like I was saying to, to James earlier, I mean, but, I mean, it came out 13 months ago, so you're just like just over a year. But, I've, I mean, I wouldn't be too concerned about it if it was not as widespread uh, and under a year because you just go get them swapped out. But I wonder uh, how much it will cost to actually get them replaced. And I worry about the resale value. Although I don't really see me reselling mine unless the AirPods 2 
AirPods 2 come out, which is rumored that they're going to come out with a longer lasting battery and uh, the W2 chip. Who knows what that's going to bring? Maybe more range, although the range is pretty killer already. Yeah. I hope more touch controls. Yeah, it's strange. Like I just, I just got mine today, and they're not really like touch controls. I feel like they're like on the accelerometer or something. Yeah. You know, you kind of have to yeah. like tap them. You literally have to like move them around to do anything, which I was surprised by. I figured they'd actually have like a, a touch sensor on the side, but I was wrong. Yeah, you can actually just tap the top of your ear, and it will activate the touch. No, the um accelerometer controls on the airpod you don't have to touch the airpod at all oh wow yeah Yeah, you just tap them but the thing is is i think it's like it's there's so many options for what you can do um for to change the uh what happens when you tap it that it's but they're all like a, a double tap like i thought like it would be nice if you know you could move your finger up and down to turn the volume up or down or just different things so where you could have multi functions maybe have all of them on each airpod that would be so cool, yeah, to have a little slider, like not a physical slider, but move your finger up the AirPod to turn the volume up. That'd be really mm-hmm. good. Yeah, for sure. That's like uh, my Sony MDR 1000Xs have the uh, like a touchpad on the side, so that's that's all I do is you know up and down and forward and back to change songs and change volume. Uh, you can even like hold your hand over the side of it and it turns down the music and then activates the uh, ambient noise but with just the voices so if somebody's trying to talk to you you don't have to pause anything you just put cup your hand over the side and then you can hear everything and then take it back off and it starts playing again do you cup your ear like you're trying to hear the person because that would just look awesome (laughs) right yeah no no no. you actually like have to physically put your hand like on the side of it it's not a a cup uh, but yeah you just cover it up okay christian what do you have the controls set to the tap controls uh, I have the left one for Siri and the right one for uh, Next Track. Yeah, okay, right. I've got both of mine just set to play pause, mostly because, like, sometimes I only have one in or the other, Um, you know. So, yeah, mostly in bed, I think. <laughs> when one ear is pressed on the pillow, you can't really have an airport in there. So, yeah, just playing pause. Yeah, I set mine up to do uh, play pause on the left and then Next Track on the uh, the right. But that may change because it's been all of eight hours. So Yeah, you have to play around with this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you going to get uh, air power mats then, either of you, when it comes out? I definitely am. Yeah, I probably won't. Because, uh, again, the only thing I do have is just my phone, the iPhone uh, 10, uh, And I already have a charger for it. So, yeah, I, I really don't see myself getting it, but could be wrong. I really just like the concept. Yeah, I am curious what the cost of it's going to be. You know, if it's like a $29 accessory, then there's almost no doubt I'll buy it. But if it's 129 then I start yeah, asking questions. Yeah, maybe 129 seems, I think, I think that's probably for me the ideal starting price. But like the rumored 199 that's 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 like outrageous. Is that really yeah. the rumor? That's crazy. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. That that yeah that rumor is like not just from one person. It's been like quite a few people. Especially when and you can pick up a Chinese Qi charger for like ten dollars. Yeah, and then one came up recently that said otherwise. But yeah, it's a nice concept though. Just putting your AirPods, your watch, your phone, whatever else down on it at the end yeah. of the day. I'm assuming it's actually like three separate coils in that giant mat, right? Not the entire thing. We'll probably have to wait for a teardown, but I was actually imagining like, say, five... Imagine the Olympic logo. That's kind of what I was picturing of coils. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Because the current coil size in most Qi chargers doesn't support the Apple Watch because they're too big, is what I gather. Because I have tried my watch on quite a few Qi chargers and it hasn't lit up for any of them. Um, so yeah, maybe it takes something smaller. We'll have to wait till it comes out. Yep. Yeah, I wonder if there's going to be, like, dead spots in it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be really disappointing. Yeah. I'm also hoping it's, like, really slim line, line because most of them are pretty thick, like, up to a centimeter thick. Sorry, over a centimeter thick. Um, Should we talk about the next post, which is Apple will require all apps to natively support the iPhone 10 display from April, which is pretty good except that only applies to new apps not yeah updates. yeah i know that that's the thing about that but i don't remember but did they do this in the past with like the six and stuff i don't remember yeah i don't remember either that was gonna be my question um yeah i'm not sure i don't think so because this is this i mean this is cool but like i just don't know if they have done it before yeah i don't remember it having been done before and i would like to see it become like a more formalized process every year 
because nearly every year we've got mm-hmm. some sort of screen size change now, <laughs> or at least every second year. But it would be cool if they just said a month from the date this change happens, then all new apps have to support this screen size or whatever the new feature is. Um, it's not just the screen size as well. It has to be built on the iOS 11 SDK. Um, yep. yep. And Apple themselves haven't even updated their apps. So, you know, it's... <laughs> yeah, some of them like iMovie and things. Yeah, yeah, they're really lagging behind, aren't they? Yeah. Well, at least they're only doing it for new apps, so it's not for like updates. But if you want to submit a brand new app, it's it's going to be required. But they're trying to skirt around their own rules here because <laughs> they know they can't get their own apps updated. It really gives credence to the idea that Apple has only got like um, like a, a one team and they just yep. pull people out of the team to work on an app for like iMovie for six months. And then those guys, that team doesn't exist anymore. And iMovie just languages for yeah. until the next team is developed to work on it because it's yep. so old or whatever. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I did just find an article that said uh, this is from February 7th, 2012, that Apple required iPhone developers to submit retina screenshots. So not app uh, sizes, but when they did retina display changeover, it looks like they started requiring people to... <coughs> upload uh, higher resolution images for all the uh, the previews for, for the app store. So they did something, something kind of similar. I mean, not, not to the same degree, but, but definitely similar. It, you could generate retina screenshots for a non-retina app though, couldn't you? Yeah, I'm sure you could. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it just gets downscaled at some point. I mean, at that point, but yeah, who knows? Mm. That was almost six years ago. <laughs> yeah. Some sort of formal process though wouldn't go, uh, would go a long way into bringing all these you know, ancient apps up to speed. Yep. I mean, I still got apps that, um, actually maybe not, I can't think now, but say last year when I had a seven plus phone, there were still apps that were upscaled off the non plus size to the plus size phone. And you get that massive keyboard on there and it looks terrible. And yep. we've had plus size phones now since the six plus. So that's three years down the track. Yep. My my biggest thing too is uh, like app developers still updating the app and still keeping it that way, <laughs> like putting new features in, but not upgrading the resolution or updating it for for uh, the iPhone X. It's like really, <laughs> it's like you're actively developing this thing. Just just make the change already. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. I had I saw a, yeah one of those updates. I think it was to a game. I guess it's going to be harder for a game. But they were touting all these new features, and I just expected that iPhone 10 size screen resolution was one of the features in there because it was a massive release. And uh, opened it up, and it still had the bars down the side and the little um, home indicator underneath, which is just so ugly. Yeah. Oh, good lord. Yeah, it took Google a whole long time to do some of theirs. I think some of them aren't done still, but a few of them, like most important ones like Gmail and stuff, are updated now. But it took them a while. I'm not sure if Inbox is updated yet. Yeah, I don't know if it is. I know the Authenticator, because I use that every day. That's not updated yet, but that's probably very, very, very low priority. And last I checked, YouTube Studio wasn't updated either, but it's been a few weeks since I opened that. Now that my account's not monetized anymore. <laughs> Just abandon the <laughs> ship. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you throw your phone up after you read the article, and you're like, nope, never mind, done, never again. <laughs> <laughs> just delete youtube studio yeah. yeah that's gone they did update it <laughs> they did Ah, oh, okay yeah yeah i wonder how much backlash there would be if they required not just new apps but updates as well to support the new screen resolution yeah i don't know i think they should but uh yeah i don't know how mad they would be it's kind of one of those things where like yeah we know we got to do it we'll do it eventually and then finally somebody comes along and says well now's the time you're like nah all right <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't know if they'll actually be that angry. It doesn't seem like something that really has to be uh, re-engineered too badly to update, but yeah, maybe I'm wrong. I've never developed an iOS app, so maybe I'm speaking out of ignorance here, but yeah. Yeah, I've only worked with like a single view app before. Really basic. Didn't take too much to do. Um, you basically just have to recompile it with um, the latest version of Xcode, and it sort of does the work itself. <laughs> but, but that was an extremely <laughs> simple app. Like one page, maybe two pages, I think it is. I'm what, sure two pages, are... man? Yeah, you've got the main page and the settings page. <laughs> two pages. All right, that's a complex app now. So you're qualified, so you know that it's very easy. <laughs> yeah. No, I can't talk for anyone. Maybe it's really hard. 
I'm sure it is really hard for some games. Yeah, I'm sure games probably, but yeah, I mean, some of these apps prob- probably not that difficult, but who knows? Um, we should probably move on since <laughs> we've been running a while already. The um, next post is by Frizzy Fox, who says he downgraded from a 2017 MacBook Pro to a 2015 MacBook Pro, and apparently his productivity soared, which is an interesting read. Um, I'll just read out a little bit from the post. Um, Basically, he says, The old keyboard was so much better than the butterfly keyboard that I had to put up with for months. I didn't have to hammer away at the keys. My fingers danced across the keyboard, and the familiar mushy keys responded quickly and easily. It was an absolute joy. And he also mentions a few things about getting the USB-A ports back. Um, What else is in the post? Ah, uh, the function keys not being on a t- uh, yeah not being on a touch bar anymore. Uh, do either of you have a touch bar MacBook Pro? Uh, no, I do have a new MacBook Pro, but not the touch bar version, so I I can't speak to that. But uh, yeah, for me, I mean, the keyboard was a little tough to get used to. I mean, it took you know two or three months, but uh, I I got used to it and I actually enjoy it. Uh, my biggest gripe about it is just because the throw is so short that you could literally get a couple pieces of dust in there and all of a sudden you can't click a key anymore. <laughs> that was quite annoying, but a can of duster fixed that pretty easily. Um, and yeah, I mean, I could see it about the ports as well, but I have, uh, like, a you know, a single dongle that just has a, uh, three USB ports on it, uh, ethernet, uh, pass through charging an HDMI cable, a uh, full-size SD card and mini SD card. So it's kind of basically everything I'm going to need. And then I use the other port uh, for a second monitor. So I still get two displays out of it, and I can still ch- pass through charge it. So, uh, yeah, I don't see that big of a gripe with it. But I could see where he's coming from, though, and why somebody would switch back. But I, I, I probably wouldn't. Yeah, I love the butterfly keys, though. Me too. But if you look at the comments on the post, everyone hates them. So yeah. what's with this? <laughs> Three of us love it. No yeah. one else seems I mean, to. Are we the only in the would, world? We're just the yeah. apple sheep, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that I love them. I don't mind them, and they take some time to get used to, but if I had a choice, I'd probably go with the old-style keyboard. Because of the feel or because of the dust problem? I think the dust problem and probably also just the throw on them because half the time I'll be typing and I'm not sure if I actually pressed a key or not because, the, again, the throw is just so small that it's almost you can't even really tell it's you know you're being pressed. But it's so much clickier than the old keyboard. Like, you can you can hear when you press the key. Yeah, but then I put headphones on, and then I have no idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All bets are off, man. I don't know. What you need to do is cup both ears to enable that. Oh, wait, no, that's for voices only. Right, it's not right. Work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, did I type shirt or did I type shit? I don't know. I, I can't, I can't. It's gonna be, could be really bad. <laughs> Up shirt creak. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I could probably repeat word for word what you said, David. Um, I've got the the new MacBook Pro, not Touch Bar. I just would uh, can't stand the idea of actually having buttons that aren't buttons on the keyboard. Yeah, it seems ridiculous, especially the Escape key. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, Touch ID would be nice, but Touch ID is pretty much already dead, isn't it? Because yeah. it's not in the iPhone. It's not going to be in the next iPad if rumors are to be believed. I would highly doubt if we get like a revision, a revised generation MacBook Pro with um, Touch ID. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I could see them easily putting the Face ID sensors into it. Yeah, the, that, the next that gen would MacBook. work really well on a Mac. Almost, I feel like for its uh, for the way it's used, better than like an iPhone because you know you're not always looking down at an iPhone. You got to hold it up to your face with this. It's like it's right in front of you. You pull it open and it's looking right at you. Right. And there's a much bigger separation between what cameras you can put on a top of a MacBook screen as well. So it should be much better, much more accurate. Um, as long as you don't end up with like a MacBook with like a Kinect sitting on top of it, it'll be fine. Right, right. <laughs> I think we all know Apple better than that. They wouldn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> no way. <laughs> Steve Jobs would come back from the dead and start killing people. Yeah. Yeah, with Kinects. He would start yeah. bashing people with Kinects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't see the... I mean, the complaints about not having full-size USB ports. Um, yeah, the USB-C is definitely the future. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you just have to... I mean, maybe Apple's a little bit early with bringing USB-C and just totally ditching USB-A. 
but their timing with getting rid of like floppy drives and CD drives was probably, you'd say, more conservative than this because USB A ports are just everywhere. They're even on half of Apple's other products still. Yep. Uh, iMac Pro, it's got USB A ports. Yeah, on the phone side, they've their, I don't know if you would say late, but they seem to really not care at all about the USB C thing because everyone else has it. Apple likes their lightning. Yeah, and I don't think they'll ever go USB-C on the phone. I think it's more likely that they'll just go 100% wireless charging and just get rid of all ports on the phone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I could see that, which I just don't think will be too bad. I don't think I really ever plug anything into it. The only thing I do do is because my car is a 2008, to listen to music, I still have to plug it in, but that's literally the only time anything ever goes in the lightning port anymore. So, Yeah, I think the only reason I use it is... um, I got a Game Vice controller during the week just to test that out. And that still plugs in with the lightning port. That's the one that kind of looks like the Switch controllers and you push it onto the side of the phone. So yep. it plugs in with the lightning port. It doesn't need USB, so you don't have to charge it. Which is really nice when you're playing games because some games tend to destroy your battery. Well, a lot of games. Anything 3D is going to destroy the battery, really. Um, so it's nice to have charging there. Uh, but apart from yeah. that, no, I don't think I've got anything that plugs in anymore so what's the chance that apple's gonna go back on these butterfly keys to turn them into something else i don't think they they you know they never go back on things yeah no yeah they won't i, I think it really is just for the size uh, i mean they, they were probably able to cut a couple you know uh, millimeters out of the design just by switching to that which is you know what they're all about and then, of course, that's probably the, one of the main reasons they switched to USB-C, too, because, again, if you uh, put a USB-A port in there, you're, you know, it's got to be at least that size. So, Yeah, that's right. The side of the laptop's actually thinner than, uh, well, as thick as a USB-A plug, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So they literally couldn't put them on there if they wanted to unless they uh, up the size up. So, What I would imagine is that we might get Butterfly version 3, I think we're up to version 2 or maybe even 3 already. Like we had the original butterfly keys which were in the MacBook Retina, the Retina MacBook. Uh, they were actually pretty terrible. I never owned the MacBook myself, but I tried a few and they had less travel and were more clicky than the current MacBook Pros. Um yeah, that was terrible. And then we got the 2016 MacBook Pro Butterfly 2, I guess. Uh, and then I did read reports that the 2017 MacBook Pros had a slightly more reliable version of the butterfly keys. Um, It might not be due to any changes to the key switches, but maybe they had some improvement to um, how how resistant they were to dust getting under the keys. Yeah, Yeah, I don't think it was the dust. I think they were just getting stuck uh, for... I'm not sure why, but some of the keys were just not... They would just be stuck down. You couldn't even click them anymore. Have you actually had that with yours then? No, I haven't. I have a 2017, but I think the 2016, the reversion actual two, so they're on like, you know, a 2.1 now. Um, but but I think when they first released the new MacBook Pros, the, uh, the keys were having issues. They were actually getting stuck down. Yeah, the only thing I've had with mine was, mine's the 2016, is I had one of the volume keys take like an extra hard hit for a couple of days before it would act- activate the key. It wasn't yep. stuck down though. But yeah. I'm pretty sure Apple knows about this by now. <laughs> yeah. They would have had enough geniuses reporting back um, asking for replacement keyboards. Yep. So hopefully on the 2018 revision, we're going to see Butterfly 3.0, the yeah. dust-resistant version. <laughs> That's the dream, man. <laughs> it's a bit of, worry for, bit of a worry for the second-hand market, though, because... A lot of people buy MacBooks when they're three years old. So this whole 2015, 16, 17 line, you know, come 2020, are they just going to be terrible, like, untypable keyboards floating around on the <laughs> on the black market, as we now call it? Yeah, probably. But you get it real cheap, so it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, should we move on? I was really, really looking forward to talking about HomePod with Dean, but <laughs> he's not here today. <laughs> we'll just have to sit back and let you talk, man. Just just tell us a story. <laughs> how, how great is it? How much do you love it? How's Siri right, it's, doing? Is she good? It's, it's my job to convince how you guys. Is to... <laughs> how dumb is Siri? She lost her no, marbles we, yet. We can't start this with any sort of bias <laughs> against the HomePod, all right? Got it. If you guys start on a neutral playing on a neutral ground, 
and I'll convince you to buy one. Right, yeah, yeah. Give us give us all the options on convince me right here, right now in the next ten minutes to buy I mean, one. For speaker and for music, I totally want one, but for digital assistant that yeah, there's no way. I I mean, not only was Siri already kind of eh, but like there's some stupid stuff that one that they didn't like fix or add in that probably would have been easy um before this and two stuff that they took out that you could already do on your iphone like calling and other stuff but i don't know yeah you're exactly right the best and the worst feature of the homepod is siri how's it the best (laughs) (laughs) best and worst yeah please please do explain Mm-hmm. There's so much skepticism in both your voices. <laughs> Do I even bother? <laughs> it's the best because if you were to like boil down like the ultimate, uh, how, do, how do I put this? The ultimate speaker, like the ultimate experience of playing music. Say you went back in time a little bit, not that long ago, and said, what's the ultimate experience of playing music in your house? Someone might say, you think of a song and it starts playing or you say a, the name of a song and it starts playing like any song in the world and that's what you've got with siri like how is that not amazing it's extremely well, good at knowing what song you want to play yeah okay but there's also other speakers that are smarter than that and uh i don't know could do the same thing so oh and don't let me forget the cheaper yeah they don't sound as good though yeah that's that's true that's that's why i said for music i would totally get the same like if i could have like a full surround sound system with homepod like that would be that would be pretty nuts i would i would totally do that yeah except they cost uh, you know so yeah, much that's money about a thousand dollars though but <laughs> yeah right yeah and the reason that it's the worst feature as well is that the command to activate Siri, let's just call it Hi Siri, isn't trained to a voice anymore. So if I said it now and anyone listening to this audio later has a HomePod, it's going to activate, which is just, I don't know, it's unimaginable why they did it. They must have really just, they must have had that feature on the list and just cut it off to try and get the HomePod out um, this month. But like, how long would it take them to do some of the stuff? Like Siri can't even do two timers at once. Yeah, yeah. That is a bit of an oversight, but neither can the iPhone. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you can't say that's a fault of the HomePod, but it's definitely a fault of Siri. Yeah, or even just iOS in general. I mean, mm-hmm. if the iPhone mm. can't do it, that's probably why Siri and the HomePod can't do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, the other real massive pain with Hi Siri <laughs> is that apparently all the devices that hear that command are supposed to have some sort of voting system over which one heard it best or which one can actually perform the command best. But mm-hmm. it is absolutely trash. It is so bad. <laughs> I... So wait, so it's been bad for you? Yeah. Like, explain like uh, an example of like something that happened. All right. Um, the HomePod is really, really good at hearing the command, like almost no matter where I am in the house. But it's terrible at actually hearing what I'm saying after that. Like, say I'm in the back room and I say hi Siri to my watch because I do that a lot when I'm walking around the house. The HomePod will actually hear it and take over. And then my watch will stop listening, but then the HomePod won't hear what I said. Yeah, that really sucks. Yeah. Yeah, how does it differentiate between your like watch and the HomePod? Like, Do you have to be out of range completely from the HomePod? Like, If it hears you at all, does it just default to your, back to your watch? Or? Well, a lot of reports have said that it does have, it actually does have a voting system. So your devices, and this isn't new to the HomePod, like before, just with iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, the device that would vote on what heard you best and maybe it's not just heard what heard you best but which can perform the task best i'm not sure which of those it is yeah. um, but there was a system and you know if you tried it you would sometimes see like all three devices light up and then one of them would take over um and that's it's been pretty bad in my experience but now it's just like next level bad because the home <laughs> just here hi siri <laughs> wherever i am but nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the best part. <laughs> exactly. She's the best type of girlfriend. She only hears what she wants to, James. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the worst kind of girlfriend? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who's <laughs> listening, so I can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I plead the fifth. You what, sorry? I plead the fifth. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You don't know what that is in Australia. You guys don't have that Fifth Amendment, but we... <laughs> no, it's, isn't it the right to remain silent? Exactly. I don't have to incriminate myself if I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. There's enough American media here that I know this. 
amendment. Um, any more questions about the HomePod? Would you buy it again? Mm, like if I didn't have one or to get a second yeah. one? If you, <laughs> well, both. <laughs> How's that? It sounds like you want a second one. So Yeah, are you going to get a second one? Actually, I think if I had the money for another one. No, not, not if I had the money. If... If I could bring myself to spend the money on another one, <laughs> yeah, I probably would. Um, I I ordered it. Well, I ordered one HomePod when the pre-orders opened, um, and then what I normally do is, if I'm free on the morning that it's out, I actually would go into the Apple Store. So on day one, I ended up with two HomePods, um, wow. one in the living room and one in the bedroom. And I've already taken the bedroom one back, and I do miss not having a HomePod in there. So uh-huh. I would buy another one. Yes, to answer the question. Yeah, I really need to go back and like read this article. I saw it getting posted, but this guy did a really like giant in-depth review of this thing, uh, especially from an audio file too. Yeah, you know what? He did this massive review and then it got tweeted out by Phil Schiller and then it actually has been basically discredited already. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's so... Okay, yeah, so it, this guy spent like six, 12 hours on this just like do testing it out and like putting it through its tests um and then then did this whole type this whole giant thing up it's like amazingly organized too for like a whole bunch of another hours and then after all this it turns out that some person just comments oh hey uh that's wrong that's wrong and all of this is wrong <laughs> and i feel kind of bad for the guy because he went through all this and I don't know, but when you read the edit, he said you. It just sounds kind of like you know he's the. If you if you just kind of you can just kind of feel like he feels you know a little upset and down <laughs> because all his hard work was for nothing. Oh yeah, I see it now. Uh, we'll just read a little passage here. His conclusion, if I'm reading it right, is that these measurements are largely inconclusive. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. Oh, he he said something I never heard. He said, "So take this with like a brick of salt." <laughs> yep yep i see that too like i know the pinch of salt thing but the brick of salt like so a pinch is like like to take it with like pure speculation don't trust it a lot but a brick like what what becomes like 100 percent trust trustworthy like, at what point what do you size? just delete the yeah. post <laughs> yes <laughs> like like two bricks of salt is that where it's like okay uh probably just never read this again or or like a mountain of salt yeah i don't know Maybe he just took a brick of salt and just knocked the HomePod off his table. <laughs> like one huge hit. You've ruined my life. <laughs> I feel a little bad for him. He put so much work into it and then to yeah. have, um, I don't know if I want to say discredited, but yeah, the comments, the, the gist of it was that if you're not doing these tests in some sort of anechoic chamber, then they can't really be taken as the truth. <laughs> All right, well... I will not read it then. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. Um, There was a post right after pre-orders on Reddit audio file about someone who had listened to the HomePod. And it was like, it obviously wasn't like full on testing every inch and corner of it. But it was just their initial thoughts. And it was pretty crazy. Like even on like this subreddit, which I've read things in the past, like have been like, I feel like my experience reading things on this subreddit have been like, they, 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 they're not. They don't go easy on when something's bad or that they, they when it's good they they make sure it's good. So, but when I was just reading it and they were just giving it so much praise before it uh it even came out um after pre-orders, it just I was very surprised. Yeah, the reviews have been a real mixed bag. So many really positive reviews. Um but as time went on, it started seeing not so positive ones come out. Um, a couple of blind tests. There was a nice article by a reporter called David Pogue who did some blind tests. Um, he started with just four people and they all chose the HomePod and they just had a bigger selection and the results were a lot more mixed as to who chose what. Yeah, I guess it really depends on what you're getting it for and what you're reviewing it on. Like all-encompassing, probably not the greatest thing, but if it's just the speaker, it's probably great. If it's just Siri, then don't bother. Like, you know, I mean, it's just kind of a mixed bag of, of who and what the reviewer was looking to get out of it. And yeah, it's it's a whole thing. <clears throat> it's the dumbest, smart, the dumbest smart speaker on the market. Yeah. As an absolute Apple fanboy, though, I have to say as a, as a complete unit, I think it's number one. If you take in... To account uh, the sound quality, Siri. Although you know, 
Siri. And you kind of um, have the, to be like full on in the ecosystem if you yeah, want. Yeah, you're in yeah, the ecosystem. You've got Apple music. Of it. Yep. Yeah. You like Apple's design aesthetics. You like not having a line in. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And you like not having Bluetooth. You like having an iPhone. <laughs> like <laughs> having to have an iPhone. <laughs> you don't, or do you? Once you've set it up, though. Well, no, no, you have to set it up with an iPhone. But, like, who's going to go out on the streets or find a friend (laughs) and ask, hey, do you have an iPhone I can borrow for, what, like, half an hour? And also, I need to borrow your Apple Music subscription. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. (laughs) But, like, what if you seriously don't have friends? Like, you literally have to go out on the street or do whatever. You probably don't don't buy a HomePod. No, yeah, yeah, or that. Yeah. Does it say iPhone required on the <laughs> specs? I um, I don't know. Uh, sure it does. I'm sure there's some asterisks on it. Just looking now, it's the footnotes only say Apple Music required and HomeKit enabled for some. De- um, some features require HomeKit. Huh. Also, I mean, can you not just turn it on and connect some other device like via Bluetooth? Oh no, wait, sorry. I f- I found the system requirements on the tech spec page. iPhone 5s or later ipad or yeah that's it 5s or an ipad or later okay well they warned you (laughs) but for just music and sound i i i I really really want one yeah if i had the money i'd totally buy it right now the music aesthetic definitely has roots in beats because there's a lot of bass and um the mids and the highs don't have a whole lot of clarity compared to some other speakers that i've heard Um, especially just like standard speakers around the same cost you can definitely get something that sounds a little clearer um but all together yeah i don't mind it well do we do we get your uh home pod vice out was that is that all right we're just like dean right <laughs> yeah yeah <I'm> close <laughs> hopefully we get the topic come up again so we can hear what um, dean has to say about it oh i'm sure we will mm-hmm. <laughs> Me too. We do, we do need to know though. Uh, what song did you first play? Was it his barbershop quartet? Oh man, I really <laughs> wanted to play some Sparks of Rescue or some Brovertones. Right. But during the setup process, it just has you repeat Siri phrases to it. I thought yeah. at first that this was some sort of voice training, but I think it's just teaching you how to use the HomePod. Like it says, you it makes you say, "Hi Siri, Hi Siri, how are, how are you?" But yep. the third command is just, "Hi Siri, play some music." Um, so not thinking, I just said that. I was just following the prompts oh, no. and I just started playing um, About a Girl by Nirvana. It wasn't <laughs> anything that I specifically chose. It was just a random selection, apparently, based on my tastes. Did you really feel that bad that you didn't get to choose the first song? Yeah, well, I only felt bad because I promised I had. <laughs> I, I had promised <laughs> to choose something for one of these two guys. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. You let me down. Did you just abandon all hope at that point? Did you even bother? <laughs> Yeah, I went looking for a brick of salt in my kitchen to smack the HomePod. <laughs> Did you just return it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I returned one of them. Damn it. I didn't get to play the first song I wanted to, so it's got to go back. All right. Should we push on to the iPad? Yeah. And that it remains the world's most popular tablet. Um, destroys the Amazon, uh, sorry, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon, Amazon's tablet and Samsung's tablet. So the total combined Samsung Amazon sales were 41.6 million for last year, which is actually 2.2 million than the iPad alone, which is pretty amazing. And I tried to find sales figures for the Surface just to see where that stood because I see heaps of surfaces around, um, but I couldn't find any sales figures. Uh, I'd be surprised if it was at 41 million though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised by this. Yeah, me honestly. neither. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I never see any other tablets besides the iPad. And honestly, there's like, like you hear like, oh, the iPad is like, like doing really bad. Like they're not selling a lot, but yet they're outselling Samsung and Amazon's tablets combined. But that kind of just shows you how like little the tablet market is. Yeah, it's 41 million little. It's not, it's not tiny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not tiny, but compared to, like, I don't know, iPhones, just, like, other stuff sold by the same companies, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. 
Yeah, I probably wouldn't even have an, a tablet if it wasn't so cheap. I think I got my iPad Air 2 for, uh, I think it ended up costing me like $100, $150 after like discounts and trade-ins and stuff. Wow. Oh my gosh. gosh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was like the brand newest one too, but I worked at Staples at the time, so I had a discount through them. And we were running some special on it, and uh, they let you trade in, and I traded in like a Nexus 7, I think, because I got that really cheap too. I think I ended up getting that like uh, on a return to our store for like $30, but I think they ended up paying me more for that tablet than I actually paid for it. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't have one if it, if it wasn't so cheap. I wish I, I saw you've got an app too. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a really nice iPad. Yeah. yeah. It was brand new too. I think it came, it had just come out in maybe like November, December ish. And I got it in like January. We were just running some deal on it. Like it wasn't even that, like it was the, the older generation one that was already on sale or anything. Because even the current generation non pro iPad isn't as nice as the iPad Air 2. Like it's a not, it's non laminated. Yeah. Um, so it's thicker. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have stereo speakers. Is that the speakers. budget one they released last year, like the iPad? Yeah, yeah. It's just called the iPad 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually the one that I got. I did have an iPad Air 2. I got it really cheap. It was basically given to me, but it only had 16 gig of RAM and that uh, RAM, sorry, storage. Um, <laughs> if it was Man, RAM, I wish an huge. iPad had 16 yeah. gig of RAM. <laughs> All right, it had 16 gig of storage, and that was just that was just killing me. So I sold the iPad Air 2 and got the iPad 2017, and yeah, it feels like a cheap iPad, but it's also really fast, and it feels really durable because it's a little bit thicker. Um, I don't know what it is about thick things that feel a little more durable. Yeah, but I'll tell you now, it's not not durable at all. No. iPads, no, the, if, if, if you drop them on the screen from... Above, like, I don't know, three, four, five, six inches off the ground. That I don't know. There's not much luck, hope for it. Do you have an iPad, Christian? I have two, yeah. iPad mini and then iPad Air 2. And then yeah. I, I used to have another one. I think it's second generation iPad or I don't know what it is. But I don't know what the heck happened. It, it We were just using it one day and we noticed, like, this part of the screen was like, like, like certain pixels like were red like that weren't supposed to be so like half the pixels on the screen were red and like it would just change random pixels to red and we didn't know what the heck happened and we took it to apple one day and they didn't even know like they they didn't know <laughs> so it's just sitting downstairs somewhere and if i plug it in and turn it on just the whole thing's red i don't know why like i've got red and black pixels that's it like you can make out pictures, just it's like it's like black and white, but like red and black. <laughs> it's a special edition, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's product red. Product red. <laughs> yeah, product red. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. That takes me back to the old school days and like the original iPhones and they would have like those uh well, I guess you wouldn't say dead pixels, but they would just like get stuck. Yeah. randomly across the screen and it used to be like a website you could go to that would flash through all of the colors to like unstick yeah. them yeah yeah it was crazy oh, really was that on iphones i'm not sure i've ever seen that yeah 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 i think it was like the original iphone and the iphone 3g and maybe even the 3gs mm-hmm. but after a while the the screen some of the pixels would i guess technically die but but they would die on a certain color and they wouldn't change anymore so most of the time it would be red it sounds like a little scam that website but i'm sure it's well technically it makes a lot of sense oh no it worked yeah, it worked. It literally just would. Uh, it would be like a, a a gif that would just play through all of the uh, the RGB colors, and then you would go back to the home screen, and all of a sudden you'd see it would be fixed. I mean, you know, like an hour later it would stick again, but it worked just as well as upgrademyram.com. I've seen it now, but I never used the little color thing. But I've, I I I remember the how it like would like they would just stick. I think there was yeah. like one up by the corner. I don't know. It was weird. And it's upgrade my RAM, James. Okay. <laughs> What did I say? <laughs> Download more RAM, but that works. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Either way, it's a great website. You guys should visit it if you're if you're feeling low on RAM. Just go uh, go to the website and get more. I'm not low at all. I've got 16 gig of RAM in my iPad. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> in my iPad. Oh man, what are you using on your iPad that takes 16 RAM? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> iMovie, of uh, course. The only thing I use my iPad for is Plex. I think that's it. Yeah, I don't even use mine anymore. I think it's literally sitting under my bedside table, and I haven't touched it in months. It's probably dead. 
Yeah, when iOS 11 came out, I tried to go like all in on iPad. I packed away my MacBook for, I think I lasted a week, and I had an iPad Pro. It was the 9-inch with a smart keyboard and an Apple Pencil. Like, I was trying to go trying to go like what's a computer type ipad pro that that all yeah. oh don't even don't even <laughs> <laughs> you got <laughs> something against that not a good idea <laughs> well i mean actually at first like there wasn't a, but the more i saw that commercial i was just like what that makes no sense and then i saw this video today on youtube i think you can still go see it's trending right now it's like if commercials were in real life or something like that and this guy like he like sprays her with a hose and is like oh sorry oh looks like you're gonna have to go fix your computer oh it's i've got to go find that it's... you've got to watch it it's hilarious i'll try and remember <laughs> to put that in the show notes as well because it sounds awesome uh but anyway yeah i i didn't last very long on the whole what's computer mode <laughs> i'll call it <laughs> but uh there, ha- there were some really good improvements in iOS 11 and actually getting work done and um, all the different uh, multitasking options. But at the end of the day, it's just so much nicer to get things done on a Mac. Um, I, was, I was editing audio. There's like a really good audio editing app called Ferrite. Um, there's basically no uh, really good movie editing apps, unfortunately. Um, what else is there? Yeah, I-, I did actually spend a decent amount of money on getting decent apps to try and make this work Um, because the idea of just having an ipad as a computer is nice because it's so small and light and um yeah but it feels like you're working with one hand tied tied behind your back and in the end i went so far in the opposite direction that i sold the ipad pro and got the ipad 2017 and rarely use it for anything besides watching videos yeah i mean there's just so many things that a a mac or a pc even is better at than than trying to app everything i mean actual programs that that do real things <laughs> rather than yeah <laughs> playing games and almost editing video but still not quite exactly yeah. what you want to do it's like uh yeah you can cut video together and have some things but uh, yeah you know if you want to do any custom animation or i don't know even jump cuts you can't even do an iMovie it just like it 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 feeds things together you can't even just spice them it, it has to have a transition you're like all right well this is crazy i'm not doing this and some people say that it just depends what sort of work you're doing. Like if you're just writing text, it can work really well on an iPad. But to me, even that is not that great an experience. Um, just basic things like, say, if you want to type a letter with an accent on it on a Mac or on the virtual keyboard, on the on-screen keyboard, you can just hold down an A and then it pops up, pops up the options. That doesn't mm-hmm. work on a smart keyboard. You have to know that unicode like alt zero two three four yeah, or whatever it is to get yeah. the, yeah. the letter <laughs> oh my god and then sometimes if you I always switch the to emoji Safari- thing oh yeah yeah i wait is I, I can't remember when it is it like command option space on a mac control command space brings up the emoji picker um, on the smart yeah. keyboard though you've actually got a globe button which lets you switch between keyboards Oh, no, I know that. Yeah, everyone okay. knows that. I just mean, like, the Mac one. I can't ever remember the Mac one. All the shortcuts in there. Yeah, maybe they'll switch the function key for a emoji key. There you go. That'd be nice. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I was just going to say that even something like switching to Safari and then switching back to pages or notes, sometimes you just couldn't type until you reconnected the smart keyboard. And that's just a software bug. But... When you can't even rely on that, really, what can you rely on? <laughs> That's my rant. The whole over. system starts breaking down, man. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything you thought was true is now false. I don't know. I can't do it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, that was actually our last topic since we talked about the AirPods already at the start. Um, mm-hmm. You guys got anything else you want to talk about? Any rants you want to have? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually no, going yeah, to so. Apple Park tomorrow. Going oh, to go nice. to the visitor center. Cool. Yeah. Can you send us fun. some photos? Sure will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> that doesn't sound like you want to. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> no, no, no. It's fine. Even that sounds like sarcasm, man. Are you sure? It's okay. <laughs> It'll be alright. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going down there. I'm excited to see the uh, the iPad things that they got with the uh, augmented reality. That's going to be cool. Mm-hmm. And the little table the model thing where you can go look around the thing. Yeah, I'll be sure to send you guys a lot of stuff. Yeah, I drove around it while the whole thing, the spaceship was still in, under construction and there really wasn't much to see. So I'd be keen to see, um, yeah, some on-hand photos. So whereabouts do you actually live, Christian? Uh, 
about uh about like two and a half hours from here so like central valley oh yeah nice all right do you guys want to give your reddit names <laughs> or twitter names <laughs> or all the above all right i'm james vdm on reddit and twitter I am the Serial Vapist on Reddit and uh, Sparks the Dave on Twitter. I'm Delano Clan 2 on everything, but you can find me on Reddit also as Lord Mythoclast. You always seem apprehensive, David, when you give us your Reddit name. My Reddit name is the Serial Vapist, okay? Like, <laughs> just let's just think about that for a second. Really? Like, like what, what cracks me? What were you thinking me? when you made that? There you go. It, right there. What was I thinking? I don't know. It was. It's a great pun. <laughs> But to actually give it out to tell people, I'm not too proud of. But <laughs> you know, you can like change. So the reason, so what I just said is, so you can also find me. So I, so you know, you can have like two names on Reddit, right? Yeah, yeah. So just change. But I lose all that sweet, sweet karma, you man. No, you won't. You you'll still have it. You you can just people can search you by another name. So if you go to your profile, you have um like I don't even know what they call it. It's weird. It's not your display name, but. It's basically just another name people could search you by, so you really don't even have to uh, say the other one. Oh, really? Is it like an alias? But they'll still see the other one. I guess. But, it, but it'll see. So David, you've got 1,101 karma points. <laughs> just make a new account. Oh <laughs> hey, man. Worked hard for that, all right? Don't, don't mock my low karma, okay? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I've got 33, so calm down. 33? You thousand or total total <laughs> dude i swear people downvote me for everything literally i said i had a same problem on a subreddit and i got downvoted They're like nope sorry you don't have that problem oh reddit why are you cool. commenting we get it dude just upvote yeah, you don't seriously. need to tell people it's the same problem yeah <laughs> But no, yeah, I joined originally on Reddit because I, I do vape, and the only subreddit I was subscribed to was uh, Electronic Cigarette, so that was that was it. That's how I found Reddit to begin with, so that's uh, that's why I picked it. And then now I just use it for everything else. It's uh, yeah. Besides Red Apple, what is your like second most used subreddit? Uh, besides besides Apple, what's my second most used one? Yeah. Uh, so I. Look at uh, sysadmin a lot for for. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in there. Um, just people like finding issues or asking questions or letting people know about uh, bugs or even like when Patch Wednesday comes out and Microsoft's patching things, people will post in there and be like, "Hey, don't patch this. We just did and it broke sixty thousand machines." So it, it's, <laughs> I check that out a lot. Uh, and Actually, on your I, profile, David, it ranks which um, subreddits you're most active in. So I can tell you exactly if you want to know. Well, oh, most active. See, that's the thing. <laughs> what, what do I most comment on? I have no idea. Okay. Well, anyway, it's sysadmin, e-cigarettes, Apple, Staples, and Apple Watch. Nice. <laughs> not safe for work videos is not in there. I like that. Which one is that? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, my my second one would probably have to be Reddit Jailbreak. Reddit Jailbreak? What is that? Exactly what it is. It's uh, where basically a bunch of people go to talk about uh, uh, or where the Jailbreak iPhone community meets. Okay. Oh, so it's just r slash jailbreak. I thought you said like Reddit Jailbreak, like r slash Reddit Jailbreak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant you were jailbreaking Reddit. I'm like, that sounds yeah. really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, how? I, I, I don't think you can do that. Yeah, I don't think so either. That's why I was pleasantly surprised. Like, I don't think that would be a jailbreak if it was on a website. Like, that's just called hacking. <laughs> um. So anyway, yeah, I am getting on a flight in a couple of hours to head over to the East Coast. So if I can edit on the flight, I will. But uh, otherwise, I'm not sure when we're going to see this episode. Maybe not until like Tuesday, Wednesday. That's fine. Okay. All right, cool. Just letting you know. Cool. All right. Nice one. Perfect. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Right. See ya. See ya. See ya.